I know what this means. I know what a win here can do for me, can do for my family, you know. So mindset, I'm, I'm, I'm super, super focused, super driven for this fight. This is the main motivation here, me little baby. You give this a little smile. Because she doesn't understand now. In years to come, she'll be able to look back and know that she's the reason I changed my lifestyle around, changed my life around. To be a better dad for her, to give her a better life. And that's what I intend on doing. I know my uh, ability in the ring and uh, I think I've got a lot to show the public and uh, prove to myself really. I'm not one of these whooping boys that you just get over here and they good for a couple of rounds. I'm coming to win. You know what, for me, it's about putting on a dominant performance. I'm going to deliver some damage to Foley. And I believe I'm levels above Foley. He's going to say otherwise, but uh, I'll prove that on the night. I've always believed in myself. Once I beat Jack Catchell and take his position, then I'm going to get close to where I want to be, to where I always knew I'd get. say the American dream, it's the Australian dream. Oh, it's good. Full house today. <laughs> Dara and I have been working together for about four years now. We've been through a few Rehab cases together, and uh, more recently we've had a great run seeing him get signed to Matchroom and obviously preparing for this big fight. I back Foley, I back his belief in himself. I think uh, if he executes well, I know he's going to put man, him away. Sell it, sell it a little bit more, be honest. I'm the strongest pound for pound fighter, sorry, man, he's ever walked with. You heard it from, you heard it from the man <laughs> himself. No, Jack's a bit of a dirty fighter. I'm practicing your knees, he wants to start them elbows, head butts, low blows. Boom! Oh, whoops! Sorry about that. In it now. Just the way I like it. We're in Tenerife. I've got a fight coming up. I've been in the gym for, for over a year now, waiting for a fight there, and I finally got one. Jamie and Nigel have decided to, to bring us out here just to break the train, not really, and uh, get some sunshine as well. We're six weeks away from the fight, so we're in a good place. And the added bonus, I got to bring the girls out here as well. So it's, it's nice, we're still training, but in between gym sessions, we're not just at home in the rain, sat on the couch watching TV. We're, we're getting to go out, do some swimming, and uh, have some nice walks. Fucking hell. It's a bit heavy, aren't it? <laughs> Oh, blow me fucking tongue. That's my workout done, yeah? That's my workout, I'm, I'm going. Taxi! You know what, it's, uh, I've been blessed for training with Jamie and Nigel for five years now. And we've got more than like a, a trainer fighter relationship, I class them as friends. And it's a fine line bec because you've got to respect your coaches and you listen to them when, when it gets uh, tough in that, that ring. They've, you're talking to two people who've been there and experienced it, so I've got that on my side as well. I want to go as far as I can in this sport. I want to have great fights against tough opponents all over the world and just create a legacy, you know, something I'm proud of when, when I do hang the gloves up. What's going on here? That's my shrine. Oh, it's the shrine for Foley, is it? It's got candles all around his pictures. Come on over, have a look. He fights out of Bondi, New South Wales, Australia. Introducing Dara Super Foley. First round, we both came out. I was just trying to get a look at him. And I told everyone in that fight week, ask anybody that was staying in that fight hotel, I saw him knock him out with a right hook. Oh! Brilliant right hand. Trying out a couple of red herrings. Boom. Shot landed, he went down, got back up, the round finished, six seconds left on the clock, but 
I let you away with that one. Third round started, I don't know if a shot landed or not, he went down. His corner threw the towel and the ref stopped it or whatever happened. I celebrate as you would. Then looking up at the display, I see what happened to his ankle. It's like, fuck. I didn't, still didn't really know what happened. Did he fall over? Then it was only after backstage when I'm watching it, it was the actual first knockdown where he went over on his ankle. He was saying afterwards, oh, should be changed with no contest. Why? It was the punch that inflicted the damage. All he's probably had his, you call it his career best win last time out, and that's put his confidence through the roof. So he's a solid fighter and he's had some good wins, but I mean, you only have to watch his fights. He comes and has it, so and that's perfect for me. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity to hit him clean. When I watch him, I don't think he's his killer. I mean, he's a guy, good jab, nice backhand, rough, dogged, dirty. But I, I, I don't see him as elite. I don't look at a man, oh, wow, I can beat this guy. I'm going to beat this man. That's how I look at him when I watch him. Listen, I believe I'm levels above Follett. He's going to say otherwise, but uh, I'll prove that on the night. I think Jack probably thinks that because last time out he fought an elite fire and he ran him close. So now I presume he doesn't see me as elite. And that's fine, you know, overlook me. I don't, that's his opinion. He's completely entitled to that. But come the 27th of May when I'm on his ass, <laughs> he's, he, there ain't going to be too many levels between us then, trust me. <laughs> it's a holy place. You felt a little something, didn't you? Dr. Wim Hof. Yeah, he's in. This man's actually a, a shaman now. He was the guy responsible for the, the, my shrine. Yo. What's going on? Dr. Hank. Dr. Hank. Dr. Hank. Dr. Hank. Dr. Hank. Dr. Hank. Dr. This is, I, I, I think this is like 10 degrees. It's not cold than 10 degrees. That's that ice pipe right there. All these people. <laughs> 5 degrees, 7 degrees, 8 degrees. That ain't no ice pipe. Right, right, Jeff. Who set the timer? Yeah, how long? 5 minutes and 15 seconds. I'm sitting on a fucking block of ice. Yep. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking about, the sound disappears when you're in here and you're only. You know, the, um, your mind doesn't drift off to them places sometimes, you know? Get your shoulders in your big shit house. The rubber ducks, mate. Essential. You need a couple of them, just keep you going, you know? That 30 seconds out. If you ain't in this, yeah? You ain't doing no ice bad. This is a fucking ice bad way right here, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, eight seconds. That'll do for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes twenty. Yeah, we we'll do it for five minutes. <laughs> Hello! Wow! Another thing as well, yeah? All these little ice bad experts running, getting a hot shower, nah. You let that sink into your fucking bounce. You let that sink in. some damage to fall. I'm coming in hot, man. I'm taking everything Jack Catchell has. You know what, for me, it's about putting on a dominant performance, and I believe I'm levels above full. I'll prove that on the night. You'll find out just how huge that gap is between the two of us and the made of 27.